Complete written instructions are included with each kit. Be sure to read and follow these instructions carefully before installing. You will need the proper cable preparation tools and a clean burning propane gas torch. For your own safety, please pay attention to the following precautions before beginning the installation. Failure to follow these warnings could result in injuries caused by fire, explosion, or electrical hazard. First, make sure the area you are working in has good ventilation. Check all torch connections for leaks before lighting. This product is covered by a material safety data sheet. Before installing any electrical accessory, read and follow the safety requirements and the written instructions. In addition, be sure to follow the safety instructions established by your own organization. The laboratory demonstration that follows is not intended to represent field installation conditions or your specific safety procedure. Frank, how you doing? What? This is Dennis Lynch. He's the medium and high voltage cable accessory product manager for the Americas. Dennis is going to show us how to do a heat shrink cable splice right now on 15 kV copper tape shielded cable. In here we have the stress relief material, moisture sealed envelope, and a special bag to keep the um, to moisture prevent out. moisture getting at the material. What you have to do with the long strip is remove one side, the side with all the writing on it. Remove that and then roll it up in a nice tight roll. And then apply it over the connector, filling in these gaps at the insulation cutback. Build up to a little bit over the diameter of the cable insulation and go onto the insulation about a quarter of an inch. And this stuff you can stretch it as much as you like so you can make a nice, tight, neat installation. So you're just filling in any voids, Dennis? Yeah, this is a stress relieving material and a void filler so that there are no air voids trapped under the uh, heat shrink tubings. But that's not semicon, right? No. So that's about the right diameter. You see it's about the same, just a little over the diameter of the cable insulation. Then we use the same material, these little angle cut pieces. Remove the backing. Remove both backings from that because it's so small. And we have to fill in this little uh, step at the end of the semicon because otherwise if we didn't when you shrink the first tubing on you get air trapped there a ring of air would be trapped and that air when they energize the circuit it would um, ionize and, and discharge and then eventually with the discharge you uh, it would um, damage the cable insulation and eventually you get a failure so we just fill in this little step don't need to put too much. Go a quarter inch onto the semicon and a quarter an inch onto the insulation, and that's sufficient. Do that at both ends. The next step is to put a little bit of uh, this um, discharge control compound, which is basically a uh, highly refined silicon grease. And we just put a thin smear on the yellow mastic, and that is to prevent the, the uh, first heat shrink tube we put over, we don't want it to stick to the mastic because in summertime, this, when, it, when the weather's hot, this mastic can get a little tacky. So we don't want to, uh, we don't want the, the first tube to stick to it. I should mention, prior to installing the connector, this is just a cable sample as you can see, but in reality in the field, prior to installing the cable connector, you must put the tubes over, over the cable they can nest all four tubes together like so. This is the rejacketing tube. And put them all over the cable together or these three tubes can go one side and the rejacket on the other side. 
This first tube, this black tube, is a stress control tube and it, you centralize it between the cable jacket cuts. This cable we're using here is a copper tape shield, but this splice is good for uni shield, wire shield, and copper tape shield cable or lead sheath cable even. So the first tube, you just eyeball it, centra centralize it between the jacket cuts, you know you've got it in the right position. And that's not semi-con, right Dennis? Not semi-con, Definitely no. not semi-con. It looks like it, but it's but not. But it, it is not. You have to be aware that you must uh, get the heat around the full circumference of the tube, otherwise it doesn't shrink correctly. Adjust the flame. It's important to use the right torch too. If you use the wrong yeah. torch, like a burnt zomatic torch with a pinpoint edge, you'll burn the tubing. You have to use a torch that has a bushy flame like that. So you see I've, I've repositioned the flame to point down the tube now, and now I'll reposition it again to do the ends. Go back to the center once it's shrunk on that side. Be careful not to start to sh shrink these tubes over this side. And then finish it off with a little flame brushing just to make sure you've got it properly recovered. And that's the first tube completely installed. That tube is followed by this red insulating tube which is positioned in the same position. They're approximately the same length. And you shrink it in the same way. Keep the flame moving so that you don't scorch the tube. However, if you do scorch it, it's, it's, uh, we don't recommend that you do scorch it, but if you do have to scorch it, all you do is uh, just clean that scorched area with some solvent, and if it's really badly scorched, you can uh, abrade the scorched area away.